Hello everybody, my name is Roman and welcome back on my channel. I'm super super excited to see you all back. I see that you're watching my BigQuery videos and I'm super sorry for taking so long to continue this series. And today I'm going to show you one of the greatest thing in BigQuery is the view and uh, probably the scheduled query or probably in the next video. Let's see how it goes. So. BigQuery is an amazing platform and from time to time you have to write a lot of BigQuery SQL queries and it takes enormous amount of time to store them somewhere and sometimes you do the same repetitive task to analyze the data in report. For example, you can take all the campaigns report or all accounts or clients, whatever, it doesn't matter. And BigQuery provides two very specific and amazingly powerful systems to save your query and to rerun it again and again, depending on what complexity of the query you have and how much data you have to analyze. The first thing is the view. And the view is an amazing thing because what it does, it takes your SQL and saves it as a pre-task, as a pre uh, operation that it has to do every time. Let me show it how it works and then explain what goes under the engine, what's going, uh, what's happening inside. So to do that, first of all, we have to make a first SQL query that we're going to do, whatever it can be. Let's um, do some basic select uh, everything from Google Ads. By the way, I uh, had to recreate my data set and I had to reschedule everything. So now it's called Google Ads underscore MWH for marketing wash house. And let's take account basic stats as account basic stats. Uh, let's just call it stats. And um, left join Google Ads and then account, sorry, customer as account. And then we're doing using external customer ID, if I'm not mistaken, uh, customer ID. So yeah, it's okay. Where stats dot uh, data date. So in the stats table, this column will represent every day will give us absolutely different value. I mean, both of them will give you as different value, but uh, in this case, I need to specify which uh, data I want to date range I want to take. And because I had to recreate the whole BigQuery, I only have like a few days, so let's just do it. Um, uh, date add, current date, uh, and then interval minus 10 day. And then okay, it's date to date. And I also want to do these stats dot everything. And I want to do account dot customer descriptive name, if I'm not mistaken, I probably I am um, customer. Oh, I'm gonna have this issue sometimes with a personal account. So it's not working. Ah, I have an ad block enabled. Sorry guys, let's just copy this and refresh the page. Uh, some people ask me why I have Adblock enabled. Uh, so I very, very rarely use it because I'm working marketing. I need to look at the ads all the time. But in a lot of cases, it's just good to look at uh, some, in some websites are just overwhelmed with tracking and this stuff. So um, let's have customer descriptive name and then everything from the stats. And I want to only look at the latest snapshot of my account. So it's going to be account uh, dot data date data date. Sorry, my spelling is not great today. Account underscore latest date. So for those that don't remember what that means, it means that every day my uh, BigQuery goes to Google Ads, make a snapshot of, of my accounts, and because I haven't changed anything in the last 10 days, I'm going to have exactly the same snapshots every day for like 10 days in a row. So I'm only interested in the latest snapshot with the latest names of the accounts, with the uh, latest statuses and whatever, and I only need uh, those piece of data. So that's why I'm saying that date to date should equal latest date. Anyway, let's look how it works. It probably is not the perfect way of doing this. I I don't actually want to go into details 
and like bug fixing and cheat checking because this is not what about this video is about. So imagine you have some kind of report and it can be actually any complexity of report. You can do aggregation, sum or whatever. And every day you look at the past 10 days and you use this data for something. For example, for Microsoft Excel, or Google Sheets, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you don't want to go here every day, copy this, paste it here and recalculate. What you can do is just save view. And we're going to create a new data set. So it's going to be ready report and it's going to be every day account uh, report. Going to save it as a view and here could not save the view. Ah, I don't have a data set like this. <laughs> Pretty sure I know what was the problem. Uh, I accidentally, when I created the data set, I changed the data location to European Union because I thought that my Google Ads table is also in European Union and then it failed to find it. But my actually Google Ads tables are located in United States and you have to have the same data location here. So I get, got rid of the previous data set I created, I created a new one and of course I lost my query and in, if in any case, in any moment you lose your query but you already run it once, you always can go to query history and here in chronological order you will access any query you need. This is my query I tried to save and it also preloads the results, but it only will be available for 24 hours, if I'm not mistaken. After 24 hours, results will not be available and you have to rerun it and pay it again. But because we query about 14 kilobytes of data, it's literally about a cent, probably even less. So let's get back on track. We need to save the view. I want to create the uh, Google Ads report views data set and here's going to be account level everyday report and let's save it and hopefully it's saved so hooray that's great that's amazing actually so we have this data set we have a new error here and this is the view and uh, our view does not have a preview button here although it has all the columns that we've selected in our uh, select statement and if we add any column here additionally we can uh, Add it there. For example, for simplicity, I can copy this and paste it before and say as account name. So I'm going to have two exactly the same columns, but one will have a way more convenient uh, name, which is account name. And I just save it again in the same place. It asks me if I wanted to overwrite it. I want to overwrite it. I click it again. Nothing happens. I refresh the page because this is what you have to do. And after you refresh the page, you will see that the schema changed and we added an account name field on top, which may, which creates an amazing thing. You can create whatever you want, any table with any SQL, save it as a view and you can query it. So I want to say select everything from uh, Google ads dot reports dot account level everyday report. And if I run this, it will, get me whatever is the SQL behind. So if I, uh, so this is, same, this is exactly the same result, but if I command click or control click, if you're using Windows here and push details, this is my SQL I saved here. So instead of going and running the big SQL, and it can be like three, four, five, six hundred lines of code there, uh, I just save it as a view and I access it. So very important thing, uh, thing here, guys, is that this exact example is not saving the data. Each time I will run this code and ask it to access the view, what is actually going to happen, my request is going to be paused. It's like coming to the post office or police station and asking for like uh, some information. They, they ask you to wait. And then they go and try to get this information. This is exactly what happens in BigQuery. I ask the data, but the data doesn't exist. It goes to BigQuery, it runs this, uh, this SQL, gets the table as a result and returns it to me. So each time I run it, each time it happens again and again, it's not saving the result. It's not an actual physical table that you can run. And it gives you two limitations, two quite big limitations. First one, that means 
that you have a huge um, gain in uh, time consumption, like you actually enjoy writing SQL more and more because you can pre-save all complex SQL you want to save. But in the same time, uh, you're not getting any, you making your SQL more complex. And if you use, a, for example, some complex SQL, querying some view that also have a complex SQL, and you connect this to Tableau, to Google Sheets, to Microsoft Excel, it would take quite a lot of time to, pros to proceed this code. And I have in a lot of cases, uh, the situation when you have so complex SQL, that uh, BigQuery refuses to run it. It says the complexity is uh, too big and I can't run it. Of course, for all of you that are juniors, that start like juniors with SQL, I mean, that just start their journey, that just works with Google Ads, this is not going to be the issue, but you need to watch out for this. The second thing that uh, sometimes you proceed a lot of data and you only need is like a few days, but your view is actually saving, for example, a last year. And in this example, I'm saving last 10 days, but this is just an example and you can take any date you want. And you actually will uh, run a lot of, uh, in some cases, you will spend a lot of money running gigabytes of data. So you always have to be sure that your view is efficient. It's better to create another view. So besides these two negative downsides, uh, everything else about the views are just fascinating and they're fast, they're furious, they are amazing, they're very easy to create and you can uh, separate view from the table by the icon. You see here it has like a phone dial stuff and if you look at the table, uh, the tables have this kind of very, very strange sandwich view. Uh, the cool part that everything inside the Google Ads uh, import export that Google Ads creates by itself is also has a lot of tables and a lot of views, but that's the details we don't want to talk about. So thanks a lot. Check out my next video because in the next video I'm going to show you how to create the scheduled query and what's the difference between scheduled query and the view. See you guys. Don't forget to push like. Don't forget to ask your questions in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you soon.